All right, so out of all of the collaboration units, Roxy has been the one people have been underestimating the most. Yeah, of course, Rudius has his place in the human team and Ghislaine is sort of really, really good for the unknown teams as well. But that's mostly PvP. Roxy is, of course, also good for the unknown teams, but Ghislaine shines in a very, very different way than Roxy does. But I'm here to tell you today that Roxy has her own unique uses, and that's what we're going to go over today. We're going to go over one such use. Now, one thing I'm not going to do in today's video is actually talk about her ultimate which that can be an entirely separate video on its own because it's so broken like we can go over all the things she does in another video so if you're interested in that do consider subscribing and while you're down there do check the timestamps in the description or the timeline or the different parts of the video but with that let's just get into it all right, so what we're going to be looking at today is her use on the bird boss, the deer boss, as well as the wolves. Now, people have been making videos with her in these particular demonic beasts as a really good support unit. But I'm here to tell you that she can actually replace the original like demonic beast units or the specific demonic beast units for these three demonic beast battles. And everything has to do with her passes. So if we go over the bird boss here first, now this is the team you want to go for. Of course, attack crit damage for all of the units. Uh, if you're feeling that like one of the units are, are squishier than the other of course go hp defense all that good stuff the best card set here is probably the signatory card set but with that let's go over exactly why she's good so basically it's because of a passive so her passive applies a barrier equal to 200 of the hero's initial attack on unknown race allies now if you make an entire team of unknown race allies then everyone's gonna be protected by that barrier that gets reapplied every single turn now the good thing about the barrier is if the demonic beast doesn't break the barrier you get a 20 percent attack related stat that increase for that character now this is also a buff so if you bring someone like ram here for example who has a really really strong amplify card and with her passive it does sort of build up buffs on her own together with roxy's two buffs together with freyr's buffs together with nanashi's buffs you're not gonna have a problem with the bird boss nanashi of course also has an amplify ultimate so he also benefits from that and of course Freyr, if you have him duped out, can deal a lot of damage on the final phase. So basically all you need is two bronze attacks with her, one on Ashi's ult, Freyr's ult if you have him duped out, or three attacks with her, Nashi ult. You can easily clear floor one phase four of the bird boss. Now another good thing about the shield, of course, is that she provides it at the start of every turn. And if you survive for a turn, or if it lasts until the next turn, which it does during the transitions of the bird boss, the deer boss, and the wolf bosses, of course. So when you're transitioning into the next phase, Phase, all your units will benefit from the 20% attack related stat boost which is huge that's absolutely enormous like it might not be as much as say what Jormungand or Thonar provides but it's most definitely on par with sort of what Megelda provides Megelda does provide a little bit more or potentially a little bit more but how often you're gonna get five of her 8% all stat increase buffs like not a lot at all but here you're gonna get like two buffs from that at least and especially when you go into floor one phase four of the bird boss you will have two buffs at least plus perhaps the nanashi buffs plus two or three prayer buffs plus however many ram buffs you have like you can you, you already see you don't really need to have built out units in order for this to work out now in the clips you're watching right now i didn't really have all my units maxed out as i'm like transitioning it into floor three so i did kind of struggle a little bit on that floor but with like good rng that shouldn't be a problem and you should clear it within two or three turns on the first phase and then the rest you know shouldn't be too difficult difficult from there and another thing to note about the bird boss floor to phase two as you're transitioning into phase two you will need to get freyr his ultimate even if you have him at one six if you just attack him as like the final attack in the attack chain you shouldn't have a problem to kill the bird without like needing a unit that can taunt up so i mean for the bird boss the bird boss is more than a year old at this point more than a year and a half old at this point even so it's honestly not too difficult of a fight anymore but at least she can provide just a little bit of of, uh, you know, assistance to players who might not have Megelda. Like, on my free-to-play JP account, I do not have Megelda. Maybe this is sort of a team I will go for. Of course, I don't have Ram there either. She can probably be replaced by someone else who has a really strong attack card. And some other really strong attack cards that do work are, of course, Power Strike cards, which, of course, you can go for Lolly Merlin because she has a Power Strike signatory card if you, like, save up. Some silver or gold cards with that. Like, you don't need to rush anything with this team against the Burbas. Even without healing, this team shouldn't have a problem. So you can just you know take your time on at least on floor one the bird isn't really gonna do too much damage to you especially because you are also protected by a shield but i think that concludes the bird boss and we'll just move on to the deer boss next
So for the dear boss, this is the exact same team we're using here. We're still using Rem, we're still using Freya and Anashi. It just works out great. Like Freya is, of course, like if you have him duped out, you can easily get through the damage caps really well. This is especially true for the final phase of the final floor. If you go into it with his ult, you attack in the order of red, green, blue, and then you ult with him. You will, of course, like chip off up to 60% of the bird boss itself. And then you sort of mix and match some other attacks that can easily hit damage cap. Rem's attacks, of course, can hit damage cap. Roxy and Anashi might not be able to, though it's a single target card. If you can get it to like gold, that does hit really, really hard. And potentially if it crits, it will hit damage cap. Again, against the deer boss, she does provide the shield buff, which of course helps you out. Like it can survive one of those jumps that the deer does that hits all your units. And then only if it like does two of those or like focuses one unit, will it break. And sort of this comes into play because of her holy relic, which increases the strength of the barrier by 20%. So she works really well there. She again provides the attack related stats that aren't as good of course as Jormungand. Like of course if you have Jormungand, just replace one of these units with Jormungand. And for that team specifically, instead of Ram, I would of course go with Jormungand. And then instead of Nanashi, you could perhaps go with someone like Milim or some other blue unit that does hit hard. That is a unknown unit. I, I think the same thing goes for the bird boss. Like it's much easier to go with Megelda instead of say Nanashi for the bird boss as well. But if you don't have those units, this is a video just to show that you can quite easily beat the bird and the deer with out the actual bird and deer boss units like of course Freyr is like one such demonic beast unit but he's not like the designated bird deer wolf uh, snake boss unit like he's not one of those but he works in all of those i think the same thing goes for megelda and you will see that in the wolf boss section where i'm actually using red megelda she is a demonic beast unit don't get me wrong but she's not the designated demonic beast unit for the wolves which is where sort of the title of the video comes into play but roxy is still really good like the deer boss can sometimes get the passive where he will get his ult up really really fast and she of course has an ult gauge remover card she also has an aoe card which is really nice and because it does a lot of damage it provides her with some healing there as well of course again not as good as jormungand like you just can't beat the 60% all stat and the rank ups and the healing that she provides but a really good alternative if you do not have a jormungand and you do have sort of all the other units right then roxy can sort of work and of course she will work when we get some new unknown units there as well so you don't have ram we might get some nice unknown unit that she can work with and that's gonna be that you don't even need to have like her ultimate at like a duped alt level or something because she works out well it's just a 1-6 ultimate you're not gonna be able to debuff the demonic beast anyway her alt effect doesn't really Really work there but i think she's still a nice alternative especially against the bird boss and the deer boss but yeah i think that's it for the deer boss and we'll just move on to the wolves next so on the wolf boss this is the team that we're using here so we swapped it up just a little bit of course we're still using freyr because he makes us immune to the ignite effect we're using megelda so we can increase our hp related stats because of her passive and she also gives us ult gauge ors which comes into play with of course getting their ultimates up fast but especially with gopher who with his holy relic if you have it provides you with 25 percent attack related stats for two turns when his ult is completely filled so if you can fill it up as quickly as possible you can almost say that you will at least half the time have the additional 25% attack related stats on top of the 20% attack related stats you're getting from Roxy. It's actually better than just having, say, Red Thonar, who, of course, does more than just provide you with attack-related stats, but her passive, of course, only provides you with 40% attack-related stats if you don't have her Holy Relic, which, in addition to that, provides you with up to 40% HP-related stats, which is really nice against the wolves because they reduce your HP-related stats by a lot, so you cannot heal back. But I found that this team, especially if you can, like, use some AoE cards and use the ultimates, because you're still hitting two units with both for and Roxy's ultimates, you will sort of be able to heal back quite easily because one of the units is a lot more squishy. Like you cannot kill it, but it does take a lot more damage from the ultimates themselves. So you will be able to heal back that way. And because you do have Red Megelda, you get your ults back faster. So healing isn't a problem in this run that you're actually watching right now. As I'm transitioning from floor two to floor three, I do end up with Roxy having like 60 to 70% HP. Now this was a little bit annoying. Say the wolf got three attack cards on the first phase of 
of the third floor. He would almost kill her, and that's only because she does have a shield up. And then after that, like, you, you probably won't be able to heal back enough, and because she has the lowest HP, well, at that point at least, he does sort of focus her with his single target attacks as well. Um, it was a little bit annoying, I had to reset a couple of times, but basically the tactic for that phase was to just use two Megalda cards, then use one Roxy AoE, Freya's single target card or whatever. Then the next turn, just to get Freya's ultimate, get perhaps Megalda's ultimate, or Roxy and Gopher's ultimate, depending on sort of the cards you get. Then ult with Freya and Megalda is enough to kill. My Megalda is only 2-6, but she still hits damage cap every single time. So I'm pretty sure a 1-6 Megalda also hits damage cap. And she was on a 242 gem banner, so perhaps you have her, perhaps you don't. I feel like she's a really nice, like, support unit. Of course, Roxy is also a support unit, and she does provide you with a lot of defense against the wolves. Megalda, of course, if you can time her healing cards to provide you some more healing, that's also gonna be super, super nice. So you don't really have to rely on just the lifesteal that you get if you max out Megalda's passive. And of course, just try to get, like, Gopher's ultimate as often as you can. Freyr's ultimate in the perfect moment so you can just kill one of the wolves on, like, the third phase and stuff like that. And this team works out well. I'm not sure if any other teams, like, say you don't have Megalda, if you have any other unit that you can replace her with. I feel like this team, especially if you don't have Thonar and you do want to run with Roxy, you will, of course, need to run with Freyr. Like, if you run Skadi, then she's not going to be protected by the bubble. You're not going to get any benefit there. Gopher, of course, feels like a really good staple here as well. Um, I, I can't really see anyone to replace Megalda with in that case, if you don't have her. Like, if you, if you know of any units, like, do let me know in the comments and see how well that works. But like, even if you have other units, like, you'll be able to easily beat, like, floor 1 and 2 with this team, so it shouldn't really be a problem. But it was actually really fun to run this team. Like, it's not a instant one-shot like many of the other teams or the perfect teams for these demonic beasts are. And it sort of felt like not exactly how it was before we got the designated demonic beast units, you know. Blue Megala, Jormungand, and Red Thonar. But it does provide you with a little bit more challenge. You might have to reset a couple of times to get it to work. I had some bad luck on, like, the second floor, so... I did end up taking too much damage, but I was like, you know what, I can still beat it if I get, like, the correct card RNG, and if I'm a little bit lucky, you know, I could beat it. I did struggle a little bit on the second phase of the third floor as well. So I had to reset once or twice there, and I did fail on the final phase, once but it like wasn't a difficult endeavor to get this team to work so and it was honestly really fun because she is a really fun unit like the thing that she provides with the bubble and she does have an alt gauge remover at level one she does provide you with some attack related stat increase like she's a she's a really nice character and she enables some really fun teams i especially like the amplify teams on the bird and the deer but the skull and hati team was also really fun to play but yeah i think that's gonna be it for this video do let me know what you think about Roxy. Do you think she's undervalued? Do you think people are sleeping on her? Do you know of any other uses for her? I can think of at least one demonic beast battle where she could be used with her ultimate. We'll get into that in another video. But yeah, I think that's gonna be it for this video. Hope you liked it. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And yeah, I guess i catch you in the next one. Bye.